Hi, and welcome once again to the Digital Arts Show. I'm Jim Suriani, your host. Uh, this show is part of the Digital Arts Festival that is produced by Center Stage Theater of Santa Barbara, California. The Digital Arts Festival shows stream nightly at 7 p.m. now through April 30th on the uh, Center Stage Theater uh, blog. And during these uh, challenging times, uh, Center Stage wants to create an outlet for artists of all kinds to share their work. And we will have, uh, throughout the whole rest of the month, we'll have dance, theater, music, film, visual arts, poetry, storytelling, and who knows uh, what else, all sorts of um, wonderful information. You can learn more about the Center Stage uh, Digital Arts Festival on their website, centerstagetheater.org, and click on the blog tab in the upper uh, right area of the homepage. And uh, today's show will actually feature a lot of the things that I mentioned. Um, we will chat with the folks from Boxtails Theater Company. And uh, Boxtails has been around for a long time in Santa Barbara. And uh, we're going to chat with the executive artistic director and co-founder, Michael Andrews, and also uh, Matthew Tavianini about Boxtails. And gentlemen, welcome to the show. It's great to have you guys on. Thank you for having us. Thanks, yes. Jim. Yeah. So um, tell us about uh, Box Tales, the history of it, how it all got started, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, well, this is Michael here. And um, how it got started was about 26 years ago now. Um, Michael Katz, storyteller Michael Katz, local hero, and uh, Joseph Velasco, now teaching um, high school at Santa Barbara High School. But back then he was fresh out of UCSB. Uh, director of theater and um, having studied with James Donlan and um, uh, move, you know, he was busy studying movement. He was a particularly gifted movement artist in terms of theater. So um, the three of us um, started Box Tales. Actually, Michael and Joseph came up with the idea and they wanted to make a uh, literary out arts outreach program from the Libero Theater and the Libero. Um, I think Joseph was sitting on the board of the libero at the time, and they proposed it uh, to Nancy Lynn, uh, who was the executive director at the time. And they came up with a little bit of seed money to uh, help us build our first show. Uh, Michael and Joseph got in the studio the first day with storytelling and movement and said, man, we need music. You know, and so uh, they called me because um, they had heard that I had collected all these uh, ethnic um, instruments from all over the place and uh, might might be uh, interested in mythology and folklore, which was the basis of, of the project. And so um, we the rest is history. We created a, we created our first show. Uh, how did that get here? It was uh, creation myths from around the world. And after that, uh, you know, we figured that was it. But um, it went so well that we just kept on going. And now it's 26 years later and a lot of different people helping out over the years and um, still going strong. Nice. And um, so the two of you have worked together for a very long time. Tell me about uh, the history between the two of you. Why don't you start that, Matt? <laughs> just jump right in. Uh, sure. Um, well, the first time I remember meeting Michael was actually, I was working for the Santa Barbara News Press many years ago, and I was out on the Delaguerre Plaza lawn eating lunch, and Michael was playing a guitar, just singing some songs, hanging out in the Delaguerre Plaza, and I was just eating lunch and listening to him, and then I had to go back in, and I kind of said, thanks a lot, that was really cool, I love your music, and that was really the first time we met, uh, but the first time we worked together was probably, I think it was in Shakespeare, was it Shakespeare Santa Barbara, where we... Uh, Shakespeare we in the Park. Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah. Yeah, with a director named Roland. Uh, I forgot his last name. But I was choreographing uh, some of the fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream, and Michael was playing music for the show. And I think that's the first time we really kind of collaborated together. That's right. Um, and then I went off to LA and started pursuing my acting career down there and getting kind of tired of it, tired of the, the grind and uh, 
not feeling very creative down there, pursuing that, that kind of goal. So uh, just about that time, uh, Michael called me and said, hey, we need somebody to come and fill in for Michael Katz. He's going to take a sabbatical for a year. Would you like to come up from LA and join us? And uh, I said immediately, yes, I love the idea. I want to get out of LA. I want to be creative. I feel like my talents are not being used down here. And so I came up and pretty much stayed up here. And the rest kind of is history. Been with him since 2001. Wow. And we're never letting him go. <laughs> never. He's never leaving. <laughs> Even after never. for the next hundred years. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. So, yeah, right. Yeah, hold on for <laughs> to get through this virus. <laughs> I would right. I would add to that history that um before he left, we did two or three shows together with the Lip Moon Theater Company. Uh so right. we'd work together in the theater a, a, a bit, besides just that Shakespeare in the park. Um before creating box tales, even before creating box tales. And then, you know, he was an obvious, obvious choice. James Donlan trained, you know, our rapport from Lip Moon, you know, when Michael took off. And then to finish that story, Michael, when he came back from sabbatical, he says, you guys work too hard. I'm never coming back. <laughs> so Matt was, Matt from that moment forward was uh, locked in. Locked in forever so um tell me a little bit about your uh process with box tales theater company um how do you create a show how does it all begin how does it how does it begin how does it end all that good stuff right um the the process is totally collaborative um and i i should say that there's an artistic side to it and a methodology that's been growing over the years uh you know, because you know, on the creative end, we've we've started, Michael and Joseph and I started from the beginning, uh, trying to transmutate our talents into a new style of theater. That was the vision, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I think each of us had our, our own kind of take on theater and modern American theater and European theater and the history. And we wanted to do something very different and uh, unique and uh, organic to us and our talents, you know. So that's where it began, and it's still it's still doing that. Um, over the years, we've grown, um, you know, sort of the market itself and marketing our shows. Uh, in order to be successful, we've had to kind of adopt different forms of of a pr approach to to the shows and what they'll be, you know. So. Um, the I guess the the mainstay is is this idea of multicultural uh, offerings. So we explore different um, different cultures throughout history and modern cultures, um, you know, storytelling traditions. And that we start with that. We start with great stories in mythology and folklore. And um, but but the back to the artistic part, um, it is deeply. Um, sort of informed by a lot that that most of the members of the box tales history uh, and lineup have have been uh taught by and mentored by james donlan a uh, teacher that was out at ucsb in the theater department and um and also sigfrido aguilar uh he's a, a a mexican clown who we've all studied with and then gone down and had him direct some of our pieces down in guanajuato mexico some of our bilingual pieces. Um, but yeah, the, the style of theater, Matt, you can jump in any time here. You know, um, it's very movement-based. It's very creative in the sense that we, we actually like to, it's, uh, you know, we have lots of intellectual highfalutin words and phrases about it, but it really boils down to the kind of creativity that children, uh, babies even, and toddlers uh, show when you watch them playing in a sandbox. Just pure oh, interesting. Uh, imagination. So, so like, what are the tools that we have and how do we use them as systems of metaphor to tell a story? We got the story, how we present it, well, let's use Kalari Payatu from India, which is a martial art form, or because we studied some of that, right, with master teachers in India. Um, maybe mime. Maybe here we use uh, just, you know, sound and, you know, um, yeah, so various forms of movement. 
Right. So that we don't have to use just the storytelling. We show stuff. And then, of course, classical <laughs> acting stuff. Um, you know, and, and fortunately, all the members uh, that we've worked with have been trained by Donlin and Sigfrido. So movement theater. Um, Matt Tavanini has always been, you know, like since the first time I started working with him at Lit Moon, his talent as a movement movement person and creative engine for for whatever he's working on has always been uh, astounding, you know. And, and anyway, so music, movement, masks, all of the above, yeah. <laughs> everything in everything. Um, now I understand that you've done a lot of work uh, with the schools and with with students. Tell tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah. So the big bread and butter part of our organization is going into schools uh, and performing assemblies for uh, kids. Um, usually they're about 40 minutes long and we'll usually do two uh, assemblies per school, upper grade, lower grade, uh, all, all geared around K through six. And we take into account when we're building the show, the California core standards uh, that are out there um literary standards that we kind of apply to our work to make sure the kids are also not only being entertained but educated as well um both literarily and historically and visually uh we take a lot of the indigenous kind of look of the culture and try to bring them bring that indigenous look either through mask or auditory through music so we're always trying to bring the culture into our work um right and yeah, we, so we perform for kids. We go into a school, we set up our backdrops, set up our lighting, set up our sound system, trying to transform the space. Usually it's a multi-purpose room or a cafeteria, trying to transform that into a theater-like setting so that kids can kind of lose themselves and lose their imagination in, that, in the world that we're gonna create in front of them. Um, and usually we're pretty successful. Uh, we have lots of evaluations that we hand out after the shows for, for teachers to evaluate you know, the, the program. And we also work with different organizations like the Seagerstrom Center for the Arts, um, LA Music Center, and they also help kind of curate our show um, with their own teacher guide. Like we have teacher guides, but the Music Center also provides a teacher guide for the, for the teachers to apply to the students. Um, and have them go through some lessons in the teaching guides. So very educational as well as entertaining kind of work that we do. Um, and that's, that's, that's one part of our thing. The other part is uh, we also go into professional theaters and that usually have family audience kind of type subscription. Um, and we perform a larger kind of show, maybe usually an hour long or an hour and 10 minutes long. Uh, it's a little bit, more advanced and you fully know, staged yeah fully staged fully staged production yeah hey and and i would add to that the educational programs so we do uh, residencies in schools where it's it's listed as as a, a theater a theater workshop theater residency but really um more and more uh, it's just become kind of communications and mentoring of youth, you know, um, the more you start working with youth, the more sensitive you become to what they're not getting and needing, you know, so we kind of, uh, under the rubric of theater, we, we provide all kinds of guidance, you know, to these young people in the schools. Um, and, but it's always under, under that, that theater heading. So we, we end up teaching them all these kind of, um, rather than a regular kind of a theater uh, program, Ours really, uh, re you know, has a lot of things that we learned traveling to different countries and, and studying different um, performance traditions in these different places. And so we offer something quite different than a normal, and it, it, it has regular acting training and all of that kind of stuff. But, but um, we, we kind of, we give them an introduction in the box tails method. And then we perform, uh, or they get to perform a piece for the schools in the residencies. And then we do uh, three week summer programs, both for youth and for high schools now, high school uh, programs in the summertime uh, that end up with a fully staged um, theatrical presentation of, of a myth or folk tale, uh, also with that same kind of a process. Wow, that's amazing. You guys are doing a lot. <laughs> that's really yeah. amazing. And, 
And again, we're um, chatting with uh, the guys from Boxtails Theater Company. Uh, by the way, if you want to learn more about Boxtails, their uh, website is boxtails.org. And you can check out their website and see what's going on there. Again, boxtails.org. And maybe while you're watching this video, you can uh, click over there and uh, check them out while we're talking and get the full uh, experience. Uh, so guys, let me ask you, um, how is the shutdown impacting you? And what would you have been doing right now if, if this had not happened? <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, man. What, we would, what we would be doing right now is um, touring um, the Bay Area. We just lost a Bay Area. Tour. I mean, what, everything that we do that we just described, the performances and the teaching and all of that stuff is live and with people. It's very, it's very intimate and um hands-on and and uh you know large groups so as soon as uh gavin newsom shut down all uh the the first the first mandate of no groups over 200 shut us down you know pretty right. much and then and then the second one shut down all the educational programs because of smaller groups but but since COVID hit um literally every single thing that we do for our income and box tales is a nonprofit, obviously and and um we write grants every every cycle to 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 support our programs but um as theater no theater in america is is 100 percent um uh commercial and viable that way uh at this point but but our theater um unlike i think uh, we're yet to find any other nonprofit that has um, seventy percent earned income. That's that's us, um, and because because our the the product that that we we create is viable in the marketplace. So so yeah, so we're able to do that. All of that's gone, right? All of that earned income from all of the tours uh, and all the school shows locally, and um, all of our educational programs is gone. So what we would have been doing is. Um, yeah, what did we lose, Matt? We we lost San Francisco Bay Area. We, we lost, lost about fifteen or so performances uh, between now and the end of the school year oh, at man. professional a professional theater, a couple at a professional theater, and then a lot of school programs. Um, and in the beginning, we we rescheduled a couple of them to like a later date, but it doesn't look very good. And you know, San Francisco just made a the mandate that they're going to close schools until the end of the school year. Yeah. yeah. All of California, I think, is falling falling that direction I right think now. So. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. I, I, I know uh, Carpinteria Unified, for sure, has canceled school through the rest of the school year. I don't yeah. know about the other districts, but um, so that's very difficult. So what are your uh, plans then moving forward um, once, you know, once the quarantine is lifted? Um, any plans for moving forward or to try to maybe postpone some performances or reschedule them anything like that yeah, yeah we're we're engaged um the 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 name that they're giving this is it for all businesses is um uh continuity so continuity basically means that um we're going to weather this storm we're planning to weather this storm we're not going to shut our doors and fail <laughs> we're gonna no. we're gonna come out the other side and of course nobody knows how long that will be but we're we're all forced to speculate um, and we're, we've heard, you know, from the, the latest news, we're pretty sure that summer programs uh, will be difficult. We haven't officially shut them yet. We're still in touch with all of our camp um, families. Um, but if it goes the way it looks, it, it will be the summer is also shut down for our programs. And then we're hoping, we're cautiously optimistic that the fall will begin again and the world will continue turning. Continuity uh, in for us looks like um, trying to rearrange. I mean, all the grants. This was granting season, so all the grants that were out came back negative uh, because all of the granting organizations immediately responding to the COVID thing are bending themselves into pretzels trying to help and help in a totally new way that they never planned on. You know, them like us and everybody else. Everything's new now, so. So they've been really trying to um, shift everything to COVID. So, so we had to go back and write all new grants to all the local organizations and um, state and national organizations that we are usually granted by. And um, we're just hoping to um, be able to cobble together enough money from those grants to um, 
keep Matt and I on salary so that we can, so that we can, um, you know, get from here to there. Should we be, be able to start and fall again? Wow. And we'll, we'll definitely be, um, like I've had interactions already with teachers and principals of, of the schools that we had canceled. Um, they're interested in if next year, next school year starts up in September, they're definitely interested in rebooking uh, those performances. So we're crossing our fingers, hoping that, you know, the school year will be a time that we can get back to those performances and schedule them. So probably it looks like um, at the very least you'll, you'll get back up and running for next school year, next fall then. Is that yeah. 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 And so, in the meantime, we're creating new, I mean, we just wrote a, a, one of the grants that we sent out was um, to help support us um, creating new material, putting uh, for, for, for our community, our, our, the youth that we're serving, but also for the schools, meaning, you know, it's, it's all the same families really, but, but, but going through the schools so that they have this resource and for just anybody, we put it up on our website. But what we're trying to do is put all the shows that we've had professional four to eight camera shoots on that are fully edited, um, make them available for everybody with the study guides. So, um, because, you know, as a parent, I know that, that um, all of the teachers are bending themselves into pretzels, trying to create new programs for distance learning, right? Right. And uh, since no kids can go to school. So, um, which, by the way, teachers who are listening to this, thank you. Thank you so much. You're, you're doing an amazing job in this totally difficult New situation. world. Uh, I've seen some of the programming yeah. and it's just amazing what you've done. Thank you very much. Um, but what, what we're hoping to do is offer this as a resource to them because there's the core curriculum that they're doing and then they're doing kind of elective type things. Um, usually it's a truncated day, but they'll, but they'll do the, both of those kinds of things. And when they're looking for material for these electives or, or things that aren't math and reading and science and so on, um, uh, they might they might be able to use this material we're putting out there because the show will come and it will also have a learning guide which which includes all kinds of activities that they can do and and really well vetted uh, educational opportunities connected to the cultures that the stories are coming from and you know all the literary content of the stories and so on. So if um, if there's an educator you know teachers out there that might not be aware of this. Is there a way for them to access this now if, you know, if they weren't aware of it before? Not yet. <laughs> oh, not, not yet. yet. That's what we're working on. That's what, gotcha. that's currently okay. one of the projects we're working on. So what I was also going to ask then too, um, since you're working on that, um, is there anything else that you're working on creatively while we're all in uh, shutdown mode? Um, is there anything you're trying to do creatively from home that, or perhaps something that you're trying to develop you know, as a result of this shutdown, anything in, in that uh, in that vein? That's a great question. Everybody's got a story about that, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing that's new and exciting, Maddie? <laughs> um, gardening. <laughs> oh. A lot of people are gardening, though. yes. Victory gardens. <laughs> yes, victory uh, gardens. Yes. Um, what are you planning? What, what What's in your garden? Oh. Um, well, I've got some tomatoes, I've got some peppers, some cucumbers, some an artichoke, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that comes out. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Um, I'll be over for onions. dinner later. <laughs> I know I was going to say, if we don't get these grants, Matt, you're going to have to feed my family, so you better plant a lot, man. <laughs> okay. get, get on that. Just, yeah, just build the, the, the Matt farm there. And <laughs> totally. It's not quite as easy as, as I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, and for and Michael, for you, what are you, what are you doing from home to stay sane and be creative? <laughs> you know, um, it's actually taking a lot of work. Uh, since since the, the, the money is gone, um, it's taking a lot of work to respond both to the, grant, uh, the whole Box Tales granting thing that we were describing, but also the personal stuff and trying to find out who... The, gov the government, uh, this, this, the local, state, and national government stuff that's being offered just to get money coming in so that we can survive. So the survival is number one. Um, outside of that, there still is a lot of time, and, and I've been um, spending a lot of great time with my kids, you know. 
I've been taking um, Oliver surfing almost every day and um, until, until they shut the beaches down completely, that's the plan. And getting, getting my five-year-old um, Eli up into the mountains and rock hopping in the creeks and just getting out into nature and staying physical. I've been yeah. trying to keep, keep myself uh, in shape for when we spring back. Um, you know, so I've been doing yoga every morning um, and developed uh, a, a yoga practice that I, that I maintain. And um, let's see, nice. I'm, I've got a pop up here. Yeah, and um, I won't get too deep into it, but um, the other thing that uh, is part of the, the Boxtails um, engine of direction and vision uh, for me is always just studying mythology and studying history and prehistory. And I've been doing a lot of reading and, and I've found things that are, uh, possibly total game changers you know like i because of how busy life normally is I, I don't usually get this deep into my studies um because there's been a little bit more time when i can't do anything else um i've i've been reading a lot and and um i've been discovering some um kind of extremely hopeful things about um the nature of and the beginnings of patriarchy and you know uh so what i'm looking for right now see the mo my main motivation from the beginning was the fact that that a majority of our students are female they're girls right and so it it hit me right away that most of the stories that we have are are um male centric and they have heroes who are male and they have the hero and they have you know like that's that's basically the structure and that is a result of patriarchy so my questions have always been okay so where are the good girl stories right good girl protagonist stories um and and that's been difficult and now um not only have i found that but i found bigger deeper answers about the whole nature of patriarchy where it happened when it happened and why it happened and what the world now now follow this what the world could look like and how better it would be for all of us if we could use the prehistorical model of not matriarchy but partnership society rather than domination society oh. right and so yeah. i've got some i got some pretty big new tools that may change everything you know that that i i want to really have this stuff penetrate our work with with kids and the educational programs but i i think that maybe even more will have to happen around that right. so that's what's exciting me lately yeah that sounds very cool mm. and then uh, matt let me ask you um you know of course it's so difficult in, in this time you know everybody is struggling financially um people have lost income and stuff but um, if people are able, is there a way for anyone to donate to Box Tales while we're in this shutdown mode? Absolutely. Um, if you go to our website, um, www.boxtales, that's B-O-X-T-A-L-E-S dot O-R-G, uh, there's a place where it says on the top of the first homepage, support us. You click on that link, it'll take you to our support page. And there's a link there you can donate to us through uh, PayPal, or you can send in uh, a check if you like. Um, so that's really the place to to do it. Yeah. All right, so this that's, is me um, praying. <laughs> yes, I know we're all praying. Let me send money. <laughs> yes, send us all some money, everybody <laughs> as well. But again, if you'd like to, if you'd like to find out more about Box Tales. And if you'd like to make a donation, however small or large or whatever, you know, every little bit counts and helps. Their website is boxtails.org. And again, tails is T-A-L-E-S, as in, you know, telling a tale, <laughs> not, mm -hmm. the, not, the, not the tale that wags. <laughs> right. But, um, but yeah, boxtails, uh, box, T-A-L-E-S dot org. And uh, you can uh, donate to them and also learn about all of their projects and what they're doing and what they hope to be doing um, in the near future. And also, if you'd like to um, find out more about Center Stage and uh, see what they're up to, Center Stage's website is centerstagetheater.org. 
Again, that's centerstagetheater.org, theater spelled E-R dot org. And uh, you can learn about them. You can also go to the blog and find out all about the artists. Um, there'll be a, a post up there about Box Tales um, and all the other artists, artists that we've featured so far and each one gets added. So, you know, check back periodically to see what they have going on. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org and just click on the blog and uh, to see what's going on. And uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us today and taking time out of your busy day at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank, but, thank, thank you, Jim. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. And um, fingers crossed and praying that uh, Box Tales uh, continues. And it, it will. It's going to continue. It's just we have to get through this little rough patch. And thanks yep. to Center Stage for um, you know, putting this, this digital arts festival on. I think it's a really great idea. A great way to see lots of different artists get a chance to you know connect with people that maybe you haven't connected with before exactly yeah and that, that's the whole point of this is to be able to connect with the artists to see what their process is like to know what they're how they're dealing with the whole um quarantine all that good stuff so yeah uh, yeah so yeah. thankful to, that center stage came up with this and um and uh it's it, it's a great project and for me it's been wonderful to learn what everyone's doing there's you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with Box Tales, but there's been other organizations that, you know, that are new to me. So that's been, on my end, it's been fun to get to know, getting to know you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, so uh, we'll end it here. And uh, guys, thanks again for joining us. And one more time, in case you were grabbing a pen just now, it's boxtails.org is the website. Boxtails, T-A-L-E-S, boxtails.org. And you can find out more about them. Also, uh, centerstagetheater.org to learn more about Center Stage. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. And we will see you next time. Bye for now.